I really need it. It's a funny kind of story. I watched this film for me at, at the right time when I was in the right frame of mind. I should also point out that this film could be potentially triggering. It deals with a lot of different sensitive topics. It is a comedy. It is quite funny, um, but it's also quite serious as well. But I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I'm thrilled to see it's got 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb, which is a really respectable rating for IMDb. Because I did worry when watching it that some people would think it was a bit too cheesy and corny. And also maybe that the protagonist wasn't very likeable. Sometimes I kind of went, very he's very relatable. I feel like he's very realistic, but that doesn't necessarily make him likeable. Um, sometimes I kind of went back and forth with Cool Craig and thought, maybe you're a bit annoying. But for the most part, I got on board with him and I enjoyed watching this narrative develop from his perspective. This was released in 2010, directed by Anna Borden and Ryan Fleck. And it's about a 16-year-old boy who checks himself into a mental hospital. I believe in the novel, it's based on the novel by Ned Vizzini. I think he's 15 in the novel. I think the novel's quite different, actually. I haven't read it, but from what I've gathered, it's it's a bit different. But he is checking, he checks himself into a mental health hospital because he he is so overcome with stress that he thinks he's going to kill himself and he worries he's going to take his own life. So he checks himself in. But the, the teenage ward is currently undergoing renovations. So the teenagers have to share a facility with the adult patients in this mental health hospital and this means that he meets some very interesting characters from all kinds of walks of life what i really like about this is that it doesn't label every character um he is not labeled as being the depressed boy he just has you know he's stressed he's depressed he becomes anxious about things he's not labeled exactly some of the characters there's a character who has schizophrenia um there is a transvestite character who I don't think is actually labelled as anything specific. But that's that's another that's the, I think there are the only two labels. There's the character who has schizophrenia, there is a transvestite, um that their term, not mine, who has some mental health condition. I don't know what it is. But they don't use labels a lot in this, which I think works really well. Personally I don't have anything against labels, but sometimes people are just needing mental support even if they're not labelled. And I think that that's really important to acknowledge that individuals like Craig sometimes need that help and that support and that assistance because they can't cope. Just because they haven't got a medical diagnosis, it doesn't mean they're not serious enough to get help. And I'll talk about more about the film in a moment, but I want to praise one of the early scenes in this because I, you know, I, I basically punched the air with excitement because... He checks himself into the hospital to begin with. Well, he says, you know, I, I want to kill myself. A doctor talks to him. He talks about how he's feeling. And the doctor says, we don't think you're a risk to yourself just now. So go home. We'll follow up in a couple of days. You know, here's some information about places that can help. And this happens so often. It's happened to me. It's happened to people I know where you ask for help. And just because you are not standing there with a knife in your hand threatening to slit your own wrists, they don't take you seriously. And they don't bother giving you support and treatment and helping you to get through this, even though that's their job. And yes, I know sometimes they're over capacity. I don't care. If I walked in there with a broken leg, even if they were over capacity, they would still offer help. But with mental health, most health professionals don't take it seriously. And Craig insists. The doctor says, you know, go away and we'll follow it up. And Craig basically begs for help. And finally the doctor relents and um, admits him as an inpatient at Craig's own referral. And I just felt so proud of Craig as a character at that point. For not just... But obviously when you're vulnerable, and I'm talking from personal experience, when you are vulnerable and depressed and feel suicidal, if a doctor says, go away and come back you have so much self-doubt that you don't always have the ability to say, no, I'm right, I am this bad, you need to help me. Sometimes you just think, oh, well, I mustn't be that bad, even though I feel that bad. So Craig, straight away, I really appreciated that he was giving this kind of individual and this kind of mental health problem a voice. I really, 
really respected him for that. So even though he was annoying sometimes throughout, that is something that I really appreciated. And I really thank the writers of the film for doing that. And of course the writer of the novel, if that is in the book. And I will say throughout it, the portrayal of, of mental health and mental illness is spot on. Um, it doesn't glorify anything. It doesn't over-exaggerate anything. It doesn't make anything seem glamorous, but at the same time, it doesn't make anything seem shameful or dirty. And I really thank it for that. And it's just about Craig's experience in this hospital. You get to see what it's like inside a an average um, mental health unit where you have group activities, where the other people who stay there are your support unit, but not everybody's on the same level. There's an individual in this who I really, really like, whose name I can't remember, but he is Craig's roommate, and I thought he was brilliant in this. He's at one end of the spectrum where he's refusing to come out of his room, and then at the other end you have Bobby, um, fantastically played by Zach Galifianakis, I thought he was absolutely brilliant, who is a bit more at the hub of the social group. And I just loved how everybody kind of helped Craig and they all helped each other. But not everybody who was nice was nice all of the time. Personalities change. People are on edge one minute and not the next. And there's no real narrative in the sense that there's kind of rising action and then, you know, crises that arise. Well, I guess there is, but they're all internal with Craig. They're all... Um, Craig's problems and the way he perceives things. We do have a bit of a narrative with Bobby and where he is going to live after this, after he is, as he puts it, is kicked out of the, the mental health unit, which I thought was a really interesting um, subplot. And I, I really liked him as a character. Emma Roberts plays Noelle, who is an individual who we never really learned that much about her. We know that she self-harms. She, you know, this is something that I absolutely loved. And she actually references this. Noelle actually asks Craig why he doesn't ask her what is wrong with her. And he doesn't because he has respect for her and doesn't just want to be like, what is wrong with you? But she actually has scratches on her cheek. Um, and it's never mentioned. Nobody asks her why she has scratches on her cheeks. And I think that's beautiful. Because sometimes it can be very embarrassing if you have marks on your body as a result of self-harm, uh, not just the typical arm scratches or, um, you know, cutting on your arms and wrists, but other places you can, you know, my, my perception is that she has scratched herself in frustration. That is my perception of that. I am assuming that that is wh where they came from, but it's never kind of highlighted. It's just accepted as that is who she is. That is part of her problem. You don't need to really make a big song and dance about it because she is dealing with these issues in her own ways. I just applaud this film so much with its treatment of mental health. There are films that try to do this kind of thing and fail. There are films that try to do this and succeed very well. I think um, Girl Interrupted is one of my favourites that, that does this very, very well. And I'd say this is almost in the same league. It is brilliant. It's very effective. The staff on the ward all have very realistic attitudes. I really enjoyed it. It was very entertaining. It was moving. It was emotional. I think it covered a lot of bases. It included a lot of different personalities. Craig as a character, for the most part, I really liked. But ultimately, I loved It's a Funny Story. It's kind of a funny story because of its portrayal of mental health um, or varying degrees of mental illness and how it handled that. And ultimately, I loved that it showed that they were going to just kick Craig out. And he stood his ground because that is 100% accurate and the most accurate portrayal of anybody asking for mental health help in a film that I've ever seen. It's absolutely fabulous.